marketing beyond tier two. Now this is Zofo. <laughs>
um, like something which is rejected by tier one. I think we, the important thing is to understand what the needs are, what are the motivations in lower tier consumers, um, because their motivations, aspirations, life are very different from ours. So it's about respecting their need and understanding how we, how brands can actually fit into that that need that they have. Thanks, Jeffrey. Now we'll hear a thought or two from PT Black about what makes lower tier cities worth visiting. These days, China's economic excitement is in its smaller markets. Third and fourth tier cities are booming, brought closer by new highways, airports, and of course the internet. So what does it mean for you? Here are my three C's for lower tier marketing. First C is cost. Yes, lower tier cities have more available wealth than in the past, but that doesn't mean people are going to spend it. Lower tier markets are accustomed to low prices, so be prepared to compete with the cheapest. Second is culture. China has over 150 cities with a million people, and each one is unique. Don't rely on stereotypes, and keep an eye on changing attitudes, especially towards money, health, women, and leisure. The final C is context. That's the background brand awareness we use to make choices. It's developed over time through multiple sources. First tier cities have solid brand contexts. Shoppers know the difference between Hugo Boss and Bossini, but not so in third and fourth tier. The market is a jumble of local brands and knockoffs. It's hard to know what's what. So that's where celebrities come in. Forget uniqueness. Their primary role is to bring context to a brand. Do noodle ads have a top Hong Kong star? Must be a top brand. But the most important element is retail. Simple, durable point of sales material makes good sense for mom and pop kiosks. Retail brands also build context by clustering with peers and even competitors. But when all else fails, my last piece of advice, find the nearest KFC. Thanks, PT. With us now is Tim Schlick, Head of Strategic Planning in Greater China for DDB Group, Cornell Sina, Chief Knowledge Officer for Ogilvy & Mesa, and Vivica Chen, Chairman and CEO of We Marketing Group. We're talking about marketing in Tier 3 and Tier 4 cities in China. What's the first thing that you notice when you travel there? Okay, overall, you feel it's darker. You feel it's less clean, it's more dirty. Uh, the people dress a little bit differently, usually they're more casual, but very often they dress for the wrong occasion. So in other words, they always dress um, like sports wear for business occasion, maybe leather shoes to go on the trip, you know, like, like the reverse. Yeah. So they don't have that kind of dressing code. But then what is very interesting is there's always this wow. Because third and fourth year city can be very, very different. And you suddenly have this really old place, and then suddenly you find this, you know, area where it's the really new, really new buildings, and maybe a copy of, you know, the, the water cube or whatever. But wow, you know, why is it this thing like in the middle of nowhere something very, very different? And that's because there's a lot of change going on, a lot of construction and new, new, new development going on. So I think it's interesting is in your kind of this old and new just just to position, but you always get this surprise wow effect. Do you see a massive drop in product prices? Do you see you know less sophisticated uh, consumers? I think yes, there is a certainly the kind of brands that are available at the price points are definitely lower because as we know the income levels of people in tier three and tier four are definitely lower. But what is the most interesting thing is that availability of brands is no longer dictated by just physical retail presence. A lot of people in tier three and tier four cities are buying things online, they're buying things on Taobao, and that is somehow changing the entire spectrum of what people can buy and where they can buy things. How are the consumers reacting to this change? Do they see themselves as the poor cousin to big city counterparts? Not at all. It's actually, if you ask consumers in lower tier markets, when it comes to fashion, for example, they will regard themselves just as fashionable as um, upper, -tier, um, market, uh, upper tier people. It's just that um, they have a different comprehension of that. I think you see um, there's a really great diversity on one hand, sometimes the fourth tier city is just right next to really rural village. There's really a very small division. So there's a lot of really poor people, but on the other hand, there's a lot of very rich people. So, you know, they don't look like they're very rich, but that you can really underestimate their spending power. 
for low tier consumers, what's um, most important to them when it comes to brands? What are they looking for in brands? Well, what we observe is that um, in lower tier cities, people in all over China, um, consumers um, spend a lot of time in finding out the best value. And this value is um, constituted by many things. It could be the best price, it could be the best quality, it could be someone, what product gives me or what brand gives me the best face. And, and lower tier um, consumers tend to go the extra mile and really find out um, what brand does give you the best deal and what br gives you the best value. And um, it doesn't really matter much if it's a local brand or um, international brand. As long as you're in that set and you're relevant, as you were saying, and you have built affinity, the brand that gives you the most value will be the brand that succeeds. Um, I mean, one of the really interesting things is that people, even they, though they might be living in small towns, want new things. They want you know, new ways of living, new uh, uh, ways of connecting with other people. So novelty, anything that is new, is certainly going to be, be a big draw. We all agree that peop simply because people have lower incomes, they would like to have those things perhaps at lower prices. So that is given. But I think the other interesting thing is that lower tier consumers are now beginning to believe that they have collective bargaining power. And phenomena like uh, Tuang Go becomes an outlet for them to actually exercise their bargaining power. And that is, I think, something significant that's going to change the dynamics of how people are going to buy in the future. Because uh, again, as I mentioned, you know, status is both in some ways desirable, but it is also alienating. And we know, we know that you know, in the lower tier, the income disparities are far greater than they are in the bigger cities, where it is a sort of a gradual thing. So there are the successful businessmen, but there is also for people who haven't quite made it, or who are, the feeling that some of the most successful people perhaps haven't made it the right way. So there's a sort of an envy as well as some sort of a um, fear that you know, that may not be the exactly the right way. So, uh, so as you know, we've all been saying, it's important to look at uh, or understand that it's not going to be exactly the same way. Every lower tier, tier city is not necessarily uh, the same as the other lower tier uh, city. You know, it will change by the kind of employment opportunities that are there because there might be basis for large companies. It might be because of proximity either to a village or to a big town, uh, which might dictate the way consumers behave. I think the biggest difference is that um, the third and fourth tier cities are by nature because they're smaller. So they are much, people are much closer together. So they are more community-like in their, in their behavior. Whereas in bigger cities, particularly in Shenzhen, everybody's transient. So, you know, it's like you don't know each other and if, uh, people are not very close. So in a more close place, the behavior is different. For example, rather than shopping in chains, they like to go to the neighborhood store because they know that person, they can trust that person. So even like Suning, for example, they may be better in second tier cities or first tier cities, but not actually in the third. So there's always this mom and pop store that will do very well because it's all about relationships. I think to that, on that note, what's also important is in the low tier markets, it's, it has a lot to do with exposure and availability, especially when it comes to brands, that um, when it comes to Western brands. Um, you know, in Shanghai, you have stores for pretty much every brand that's around. In lower tier cities, you don't have that. And if you ask people in lower tier cities what brands are you trusting, and um, very often people say, yeah, I, I trust Chinese brands. And when you ask deeper, you find out, OK, actually, it's a Western brand. But they did, were, didn't realize it was a Western brand because it has a, had a translation into Chinese, and which all comes back to availability and exposure. When you're not exposed to a thousand shops for the brand, you have a different perception of that. If you visit a supermarket uh, or a hypermarket in a third tier or fourth tier town, you would still have 40 brands of shampoo. The only difference was, uh, would be that in, the, uh, in Shanghai or Beijing, um, 30 of those brands would be multinational or, uh, brands, whereas in the lower tier, you would find a whole lot of regional brands, a whole lot of local brands, whose names you would have never heard of but they would all be th there. So the choices that people have are sl somewhat different, uh, and which is also a good thing because people are constantly saying that we want choices. We want the same kinds of choices that consumers in the big city have, except that the choices that are made available to them are perhaps 
slightly different. Yeah. I think and in terms of brand building on that note, it's, um, of course it's, it's very complex to um, do through the tier marketing in China. At the same time, on some levels, it's actually very easy because for lower tiers, um, for lower tier consumers, um, brand, adver brand advertising or the fact that you're doing brand advertising is actually brand building because people take a look at, the, at a brand on TV and say, oh, wait a minute, if this brand is able to afford uh, advertising on CCTV, I trust this brand because it must be good. What do you think marketers really underestimate about this uh, group of consumers? I think uh, underestimate their change because you know this thing about lessons learned usually do not work because you learn something that worked and then you can't repeat it, it it's already moved on and I think they um, the third and fourth year are moving on very quickly the consumer expectations move very quickly Tim Viveka Kuno thank you for being on the show now this wraps it up for us today Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and Tudo. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter. We'll see you again.